<laughs> Let's take another one out. Woo! And she's empty. Yes. The Hawkeye, the Model 77 Ruger guide gun. And guess what cartridge? You probably already know. 338 Winchester Magnum. Yes, that would bring a big bore your way. Hickok 45 here, enjoying some punishment, some shoulder exercise. Also, seriously consider getting a big bore rifle so that you too can be knocked around. Because when you're shooting a 22, it's like blink, blink, blink. But you saw what this thing does. It gives you a little exercise. <laughs> and it's fun. I, it really is. If it hurt too much, I wouldn't shoot it. Uh, well, I might shoot a few times. Uh, but I wouldn't enjoy it. And this doesn't really kick enough that it's uh, what you might call punishing. It's, it's pretty cool. I've been shooting it and enjoying it, actually. I really have. So I uh, thought we'd bring you something a little different. I requested it from Buds, and so I need to get a big bore again, uh, some kind of bolt gun. Uh, I've had the 375. We've done one of those, of course, and I used to own a 458 Win Mag, so it just for plinking, bowling pins, and that sort of thing. And I don't know if I want another 458 even for a video, maybe sometime. But those really do knock you harder than than something like this, even. And I don't mind recoil, you know that. I can handle recoil pretty well. But uh, this is in the category uh, where it's still fun. And I'm considering a 338 Win Mag for myself. I really am. And I'm not sure, and part of this was out of selfish reasons. We hadn't brought you this yet. And I kind of like this gun. I looked it up and it's pretty neat. And I don't know if this is the one I'll buy. Uh, well, not the specific gun, but I might just buy one of these. I really like this uh, or something else. But in that cartridge, I like that 338. It's kind of neat. All right, so this is the Model 77. You know, the classic uh, gun that uh, you know, Ruger's been making for a long time. Well, it's since 68, I think they came out with it. And then they changed it. It was kind of like a lot of the other bolt guns that back in the 60s and 70s, 80s, I guess. They did uh, kind of like the Mauser action, but they kind of got away from some of the, the controlled feed, I think, and the, the big claw extractor and all that, I believe. And I never did have one. And then in 91, when they came out with the Mark II version of it, they uh, they kind of return to the old ways of the controlled feed uh, of the, the original Mauser, and they added the uh, three position safety so that you can you can load it and unload it and do whatever you want to do with it with the safety on like it is right now, but the trigger won't pull, or you can lock it up completely by pulling it back there and you can't even open a bolt. Makes it a little safer. They improved the trigger, you know, and the other changes in the stock and just construction. But and I'm not an expert on these, but They've gone through an evolution there over the years since 68. And then in around 2006, I think, they came up with the, the Hawkeye, the guide guns, the, the African models, like this. And uh, they changed the contour of the stock a little bit. What else did they do? They, they changed the trigger again, I think. And, and it is a nice trigger. It's a nice trigger. So, you know, a few changes through the years, but the Model 77 is, uh, I guess you could call it a modern, you know, classic like the Model 70 and, and uh, the Remington 700, and some people would scoff maybe, put it in the same category, but it's a, it's a, it's a nice gun. Now this one, this particular one, we provided the wood for it, of course. It's, uh, it's from the laminate trees we grow here on the compound. Now, we brought out the, uh, the marlin just to show you the different uh, trees that we, we're, this is a little ad here in the middle of the video, because we sell these laminate tree, we, we harvest these laminate trees and we sell the lumber uh, to gun companies. Uh, these would grow in the back part of the compound. We don't have many of those. Notice how pretty that is. That's a nice shade of green in on that Ruger. And I kind of like the Marlin myself too. We have more of those. Those are more plentiful. I think we get $100 a board foot for that if anybody's interested. But anyway, lamin laminate trees only grow in Tennessee, if you didn't know that. I'm so glad we have a few gullible viewers out there. <laughs> Makes it more fun. Let's shoot the thing again. It's a powerful round, the 338 uh, Winchester Magnum. Came about in, what, about 58, I think, 1958. And it's a, it's a big one. It's kind of a scaled down 375 H&H &H Magnum. Uh, you know, uh, kind of based on that cartridge. Uh, just uh, shorter and not exactly like that one, but it's, uh, what, a 33 caliber and it has some punch. It's good for 
oh, a wide range of game. Might be overkill for some things, but it, uh, it and I'm not a hunter, so I'm not speaking, I've only, I'm only speaking from what I've read really and what I know. I know people who hunt, let's put it that way. And uh, you know, for bear, if you hunt bear, a moose, uh, a lot of African game, and of course it would do for almost anything, almost anything. But there are always better cartridges, uh, you know, for specific game. You know, obviously there's so many out there. But the 338 is a very popular round. Got a lot of punch. It's a real thumper. You know, and this is kind of a thumper round, no doubt about it. A little thumper rifle. Let me load it up again here. Uh, and and this is called the guide gun. This is the the model of the uh, the Hawkeye, model 77, and that comes from a firearm. If you believe it or not, there are people all over the planet who work as guides. They take people hunting. Well, that's what I got. The, I think I had that. Well, yeah, I've seen that before. I'm gonna try to put too many in it or something. Uh, there are people who work as guides. I think it was too far forward, maybe. And uh, they take other people hunting. What am I doing here? Let's make sure we're, let's start over. Let's put it on safe and rack that in. This is another advantage of this three position safety. See, the trigger won't pull and I can work the bolt a little bit more safely. So, oh, I got one of them out of Kelter there. What am I doing? I've been shooting. There we go. I, th I see it. The nose of that second one is against the uh, ramp there. That's what that was. So I didn't have it back far enough. Uh, but a guide, you know, takes people out on hunts and maybe doesn't get to hunt a whole lot himself, but he or she is there. And sometimes the hunters are maybe not the most experienced, maybe not the best shots, you know, and I don't know a lot about that, but you, know, you can go out west, you can anywhere in the eastern United States, Africa, go hunting and there are people, they'll go along with you, help you find the game and, and so you take the game and everything. Uh, well, if it's in an area where there's dangerous game, especially, well, that guy's gonna want a nice rifle, him or herself, something that will take care of business if needed. Okay, so something they knock around with that's powerful, handy, durable, reliable. Uh, it's kind of what you like. Well, look at the Marlin I have. Uh, well, that one would work too, I guess, but the, it's called a guide gun. And it's a kind of a shortened, you know, Model 95 Marlin for the same kind of purpose. Okay, all right, let's put one in the tube, take a couple of shots. 338 Winchester Magnum. Now, obviously, we got a few targets here. We can't shoot much steel. <laughs> So we got a few other targets here just to uh, you know play with the power of it a little bit. But I'm gonna go over there and, and see if I can hit the red plate. It's gonna be hard on it, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take a few shots at it. It might knock it down or something. Got your safety off. Oh, hit hard and gets there fast. You notice that? <laughs> Got a muzzle brake, so it's pretty loud. Man, I'm gonna take one at that little bitty plate. That's a new target there. I'll, I'll tell you about it in some other video. All right, here we go. Ooh, just missed it. All right, it holds three, and uh, you could have three plus one you know, if you wanted to. Uh, speaking of the muzzle brake on this rifle, the muzzle brake will screw off, the bolt's open, it's empty. And if you want to, don't want the muzzle brake, you want to put uh, this on there to simulate the same amount of weight, then supposedly your point of aim won't change a bit, the point of impact, okay? It's because the same weight as the muzzle brake and about the same length. So if you don't want that, you know, that muzzle and that blast, you can do that. Or if you don't want either, you can just put this over the threads, okay? So that's why I've got those out here. And then another thing about this rifle, you know, the uh, mount, scope mounts here and everything are right, you know, just milled into the to the uh, the receiver there. So you got your rings that come with it. You just pop those on there and put your scope on. Okay, so those come with that. And uh, you notice this action. You all have seen Mausers around here for sure. And you've seen them everywhere. Does that look familiar? The way you take that bolt out? <laughs> That's what's kind of cool about this. It's uh, about as modern as you get in a rifle. And it's, it's kind of like uh, going back to the old Mauser, you know, everything about it practically in the bolt, 
you know, the extractor and the controlled feed. I'll show you again. Why don't we shoot some of these? Uh, we're shooting Federal, of course, which we deeply appreciate. Those were the uh, partition, okay? These are the uh, trophy bonded. Uh, hey, we might try a couple of them. I haven't shot these yet. All right, so by controlled feed, this is kind of what, I'll put that safety in the middle there, what I mean, you know, it picks up that cartridge, you know, it, uh, you know, it, 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 it controls that cartridge and feeds it. How's that? Safety's on. We'll put it all the way back here so it's really locked up. Okay, and let's go ahead and like that. And let's just try three of those. You want to? That's a pretty bullet, isn't it? Well, you know, I'm not sure what these cost, but I know they're not cheap. And again, that's uh, all the reason to, to appreciate Federal and what they do for us. So that I know that I can uh, request a, a firearm like this in 338, and I don't have to go scrounge up the ammo and pay for it. And it's a, it's a big help. It really is. Uh, that's a nice rig. And, uh, you know, I can shoot it. Again, I don't hunt, so I don't bring you a lot of hunting rifles and, you know, hunting shotguns as much. Occasionally we do, and uh, you know I'm not going to go hunting with it or anything, but just kind of show you the rifle, introduce you to it, and uh, you know maybe demonstrate the power of it, and uh, you know how it operates. Because I enjoy these things, uh, even though I don't hunt rifles like this. I like bolt guns, and uh, to me these kinds of firearms can just be a plinker. I had a Model 70 bolt gun and 458 Win Mag for a year or two, 375 H and H. All I did was shoot bowling pins, uh, shoot stumps, see how much it would penetrate, and just things like that. You know, shooting is fun, and uh, you know, most of you know that. Okay. All right, so we've got three of these in here. Now, what did I say they're called? Uh, these are some trophy bonded. Okay. Let's see what trophy bonded will do on that old spray can that has given me trouble for uh, years, and I have finally relegated it to the range. It happens to be full of water. So I think it won't be in a second or two, though. <laughs> oh, that's a tough piece of plastic. And there's a kitty litter container. <laughs> there's another one. Oh, man. That hits with some authority. Woo! Especially with a muzzle brake. But you know, uh, the recoil is not bad at all. I, I am pleasantly surprised. I had never fired a 338 until this rifle came. And I, I've been enjoying it because it just doesn't kick that much to me. And uh, it's got a nice rubber pad. I put a couple of extenders on it there. So it, it fits me really well. Might fit you or whoever get, gets it on the e-gunner. But... Uh, those come off, there's two screws here. There's a screw that comes with, with it in a kit, an Allen wrench. So in there, you can, you can adjust those however you want. Take one out, take two out, leave them all there. It's up to you. And uh, it's a pretty neat rifle. You know, the floor plate, the magazine, you just push in this button right there. Works really well. Like some of these are kind of tricky to get out. One of the things Ruger, I was reading, kind of pioneered was this, uh, this screw that, I guess that's it, holds a stock you know, to the barrel at an angle. I think no one had done that before uh, Ruger came up with that. And it's supposed to be a, uh, an efficient, effective way to fasten the stock to the barrel. You know, I, I just never really, have I ever owned a Ruger bolt gun? Guess I have not. Maybe I'll have to change that. Okay. Uh, you've got you know, your sling attachments here and all that the sights aren't bad one reason i ordered this one so many bolt guns that are designed for hunting they don't really have any metallic sights so you've got to rig them up with a scope you know and i i have done that before but it's typically i'm not interested in doing that over and over and over again uh, with various different bolt guns it's nice to have one with metallic sights and then if i want to put a scope on it i can you know it's kind of nice all right let's load up i'm going to Let's see, I don't know, I, I'm not sure what the difference is. These are uh, 200 grain, these uh, trophy bonded, and these are 250. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the 250 grain round is more powerful, it just means it's heavier. In fact, sometimes a heavier bullet doesn't kick as much or seem to. There's a different kind of push to it. 
Uh, but I don't know. I'll, I'll go ahead and shoot the heavy ones because I've got a five gallon bucket down there of water that's just begging to be plinked. Yep. All right. I guess no one will ever call me 22 plinkster, right? <laughs> because I plink with a 338 and a 458. I should have had the safety on there, but uh, well, I mean, I could have, you know, everything's pointed down range here, so I load to shoot. But uh, again, that three position safety makes that safer to, to load and all that. All right, let's put one on the target at least. Or two, maybe. <laughs> Let's put them all on there. Yeah, because I was a little curious about whether a uh, 338 would go, you know, penetrate paper. Because uh, you just never know. Paper can be pretty tough sometimes. Uh, <laughs> pretty funny, huh? Oh, we've got a couple of two liters. Why don't we see about this topping off? Uh, I'm going to do a four plus one. I'm going to put it on safe, especially for that endeavor. Now, I haven't done this yet, but uh, let's see. If I put three in there, that would be three, right? Okay. So I've got it on safe. Let's run one into the chamber. And let's see now, that'd be kind of tr tricky, huh, with that controlled feed. Uh, so. I would need to put one in the, directly in the chamber, and yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Okay, doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. All right, I'm not sure if that hurt the extractor or not. Now I've got the safety all the way back there. It's totally unlocked. One of the neat things about the safety, you know, like with the Mauser, and when you bring that thing all the way back, it locks up uh, the trigger and everything. And this is the hammer basically, so that has to go forward in order for it to, to fire. So it's not only blocked, but it's blocked back here as well. So you really have this thing safe. I mean, you could throw it off the back of a truck and it's just, it wouldn't go off that I can see any way it could. All right, and I wouldn't advocate you do that, by the way. All right. Well, why did I do that? Let's just pick it up and put it back in. All right. There we go. Uh, I see another watermelon down there that just needs to go. <laughs> Into a million pieces. And let's try this five gallon bucket. Oh man. <laughs> the shock. And another two liter. Boy, if you notice, I'm uh, being careful about what's behind my target you always should but it's especially important when you're firing something like this because what's behind your target could get smacked too right and then whatever's behind it and then whatever's behind it and behind it so uh, you got to be careful with something this powerful you got to be careful with anything you got to be careful with a pellet gun let me take another shot at that little plate over there. I think I was probably low. Probably high then. Yeah. And somehow I managed to miss it again. I've not moved the sights. They're adjustable for windage. Uh, but it seems to be close enough to, you know, Close enough for government work, as they say. Let's try some of these. Get away, bug. I might like to try to hit it. I don't know. Since I've destroyed everything here anyway. You don't mind my uh, continuing to punish my shoulder a little bit here, do you? 338 wind mag. Uh, the gun is pretty heavy. It's about nine pounds, I think. Or maybe it's eight without a scope. Eight and a half, something like that. And uh, by the way, it sells for around 12, 1250 MSRP, I believe. So that's uh, some of the specifics of it. I'll try that rascal again. These 
probably have even a different point of aim, but. <laughs> Look at him swing. Yee, doggies. <laughs> I took a shot at it earlier today and hit it, and it swung and it knocked the whole stand down. And John and I had to go over there and anchor a little bit better. All right. Uh, put one on that red plate. Other one. Yeah. Wow, that hit hard. I, oh, I started to say I wish I had something else to shoot. I just noticed a two liter here that had not been shot. So let's, uh, anything else? Can't shoot much of the steel. And it's just too hard on it. But I'm going to put two in anyway, in case uh, I miss the two liter. How's that? Or in case it takes two rounds to uh, finish it off. Sorry, Federal. <laughs> uh, better watch it. There's steel back there. All right. Pulverize it. We got one more bullet. Let's just go to the red plate one more time. Yeah, red plate. Boom. Oh man, this thing is fun to shoot. Uh, it really is because it uh, it's powerful. You can feel the power, but it uh, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't hurt you. Uh, I mean, it really doesn't. I could take my shirt off and show you there's no bruise there, right? But you don't want to see me with a shirt off. Uh, now I have been out here shooting some three inch 12 gauges, uh, double lot or slugs and, and wow, you know, you do get a little bit of a bruise, it, but it doesn't really hurt. It's not like, uh oh, I'm injured or something. Uh, no, this, this, I'm serious. This is not a, a punishing thing to shoot unless you're like recoil sensitive. It's not that bad. And I'm pleased to learn that because from my reading, I have grown more and more fond of the 338 Win Mag. And uh, I think I might have to have it in some, some rifle. Uh, maybe this one. Uh, this is a nice, reliable, uh, you know, durable, uh, you know, kind of affair, you know. And, and some people might think that's really ugly. It's John and I kind of like it. You know, I, maybe it's because it's from our own trees, but we kind of like it, to tell you the truth. But I don't know, I might get something in, in uh, nice wood and, uh, you know, blue. And, uh, but I think I need something that shoots. Bam, that big 338. That is, that is cool. So anyway, I don't know for what that's worth. I, you know, again, I'm not a hunter. Uh, other people can advise you, you know, chime in to the, uh, the comments. If you own one of these and you hunt with it, or you've shot a 338 a great deal, and you've shot lots of other big calibers, smaller calibers, and in rifles and you have uh you know uh, some experience to, to weigh in with uh, feel free because uh, it is one of uh the popular i guess it's considered a big bore kind of it's in that mid-range mid bore in terms of a rifle cartridge but it definitely has some punch so this is a real thumper no doubt about it and i really don't know anything else about it to tell you sights adjustable for wendy's there like i said and of course you got your scope mounts and most people would probably put a scope on it and uh pretty neat pretty neat and it's a good looking rifle i'll have to say um so anyway appreciate you guys coming by and uh, watching me uh, get pounded and uh, again hope you support the people that support us go to the description and uh, we'll see you here at the range again i'm sure life is good you guys enjoyed that because I know I sure did. Well, I've got you here. I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. 
They also have hands-on experience, even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just want to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. That's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.